What is going on guys? So today what I'm going to show you how to do in this Unreal Engine tutorial is how to make breakable glass that will shatter and have collision and also fit a mesh to any scale and any place and any rotation in the world. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into this tutorial. I also have a Discord set up with over 3,000 members in it, all willing to help, and I'm there to help as well if you get stuck or you just want to hang out with other developers. If you want advanced systems that are already set up for you, I also have an Unreal Marketplace page for plugins. So let's start by creating the folders that we need so our project is organized. Okay, so I have a sound file that is breakable glass. I have particles and I have blueprints. Now the blueprints will have a just a standard actor in it. You can name it whatever you want. I'm naming this one BP Destructible Glass. You can name it whatever you want. That doesn't matter. Okay, and then once we have these folders, we need to make another one called Material so that we have the glass material. If you already have a glass material, you can skip that part. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make a glass material. Before we get into the material, let's go ahead and set up the actor though. So what the actor needs is a component of a cube or a static mesh, whichever you're using. I'm using a cube and we're gonna shape this to look like a wall, okay? And the reason we're gonna do that is so that the transition between the wall and the particles is very smooth and looks clean. So we're gonna thin this down. We're gonna scale it up and scale it to make it taller as well. Okay, so now we can make the glass material now that we have the actor. So if you're not too familiar with materials, don't worry, I'm gonna go walk you through it. And at the end of the video, there will be a full in-depth tutorial on what each node does. But for the sake of this, let's go ahead and create a color node in the material by holding down three on your keyboard and left clicking. We're gonna give it a gray color because I found that gray works best. However, we need to switch some settings on our material so we can get translucency and the reflectiveness stuff. So we need to click on the M glass material node, the base thing that everything plugs into. But we need to set the blend mode to be translucent. By default, it's gonna be opaque. You wanna make this translucent. And if you scroll down and you see lighting mode, you'll wanna set this to surface translucent volume, okay? It's gonna be something else by default. Set this to surface, surface translucent volume so you can get the metallic roughness and specular values. And now that we can adjust those specific properties such as specular, metallic, and roughness, we can set those up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold one on my keyboard and left click to get a constant value, okay? And this will be a float value of zero to like one or something like that. So we're gonna plug these in to roughness, specular, and metallic inputs, okay? And what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna make the roughness be zero, the specular be one, and the metallic be around 0 0.2. 0 0.2 should work well. And now, how you can see, we are already kind of getting a glass look. However, we need to set up translucency with a Fresnel, and we're gonna get into that now. So near the opacity input of the material, you're gonna to wanna to set up a Fresnel node. You can right click and type in Fresnel to find it, okay? You're gonna plug it into opacity, and what Fresnel does is it creates a halo effect of depth for the, for the translucency. So it's not a flat translucency, it has depth to it. So go ahead and left click again while holding one on your keyboard to create a constant. And we're gonna set this constant to about 0 0.8. We're gonna create two of them, but we can just start with one for now. We're gonna set this to 0 0.8 to give it a darkish look so it looks like glass, like it has substance to it, okay? And then we're also going to create another one and apply it to the second parameter in the Fresnel node. We're gonna set this to about 0 0.5. You can mess around with this in a bit, but it's up to you. The last input on the Fresnel node, we don't need to mess with. You can leave that blank. Now we're gonna set up an optional thing. You don't have to do it, but it's called refraction. What it does is it kind of distorts the image inside of the object. So it's just a nice little thing. We're gonna leave it at the default value of one. And at the end of the explain on the nodes why I did things, I will show you why you wanna leave it at one. But for now, just leave it at one um, and it will add a little bit extra polish to your material. Okay, so we have the material set up and we have the base for the blueprint set up. Now, let's go set up the Niagara system, the Niagara particle system. Okay, so we're going to start with a template of the omnidirectional burst. I recommend you start with templates if you're starting out with Niagara. So go ahead and create the omnidirectional burst. And you can give this a name of however, whatever you like. I'm just going to call it NS Destructible Glass. So now that you have the glass destruction, go ahead and open it up. Okay, and you're gonna see this. If you're not too familiar with Niagara, it's okay. I'll explain this and how the nodes work on each one of these things do. But for now, just follow along. So we'll create a mesh renderer. 
Okay. And we're going to give it a cube. So by default, if you click the meshes, it'll have that thing. I don't know what it's called, but we're, we'll give it a cube. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change its scale to something like 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.1 to give it like a sharded glass look. If you're using your own mesh, you don't need to do this. You can just make it look like glass. Okay, now we need to give the properties of the glass simulation, such as its explosion amount, stuff like that. So let's start with add velocity. Okay, let's go to that module and let's change its maximum to something smaller, like 75, so it doesn't pop out so much. All right, now what we need to do is we need to get the shape location and turn it into a box. Right now, it should be a sphere for you. We're going to turn it into a box, okay? And the reason we're doing a box is if you go back to the actor, remember, the wall is a, is a cube. It's a box. So you'll want the shape of this to be similar to whatever mesh you're using. In this case, we're using a cube, so we want it to be identical for the transition. Now we want to give the, sh the mesh a random rotation. So on the particle spawn, use the initial mesh orientation node with the random option to make each object look different. However, we have a problem. Our mesh does not have a glass material, so we need to give it a glass material. So if you go to the mesh render on Niagara, you can do the override material option. Okay, and now if you do that, you'll see a plus icon. You can add this to your array. So if you click the drop down on it, you will see a material. Now I'm gonna give this M glass. If your object has more than one material slot, you're gonna have to line these up with the index amounts. Okay. Now, so the particles do not fall through the ground, we need to give them collision. So we're gonna add the collision node on the particle update. This is kind of like tick for particles. And now, as you can see, when we go into the level and we spawn the particle in there, they'll collide with the ground, which is what we want. However, we still have a problem. When we spawn the particles, they disappear really quickly. So we need to fix that, right? Breakable glass should last on the ground. So let's do that now. One more thing before we do that. If you are unhappy with the scale of your particles, you can change them in the mesh renderer under the scale size. Okay, so now that we have the particle system and it's dying out, we need to fix that. So let's go to the emitter state at the top and let's go to self fixed and let's set the loop duration to 30 seconds. This value represents seconds, okay? And then we need to go to initialize particle and we need to change this from random to direct set. And we need to set this to 30 as well so that it will last 30 seconds. And now as you can see, the particles are lasting longer. However, I am not happy with the bounciness of the glass. I want to turn that down. So we're going to go to the collision not module on the Niagara and we're going to set the restitution to 0 0.2 and that will make it less bouncy to be more realistic. So at this point, you should have the material for the glass and the particle system that you can use. Now what we need to do is we need to set this up in code so that when we apply damage to the actor, it will spawn the particles. So let's use the event any damage for this. This is an event in Unreal that will be called whenever apply damage is called on this actor. And don't forget to give your cube the glass material as well so it looks like glass. This is on the actor as well, on the component. Okay, so let's go to the event graph and let's drag off of our cube component. And what we're gonna do is we are going to get the world scale. And the reason we're doing this is so that the particles line up with the mesh. So they're always the right scale as we saw in the intro. We're also going to spawn the system at location. We're gonna plug the get world scale off the component into there. We're also gonna get world rotation and get world location. And we're gonna plug those in. Okay, now once you have get world location, get world rotation, and get world scale plugged in, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set the system template. You're going to want to set that to the glass destruction particle. And when we do this, it will spawn the glass. Okay, but we don't want the component, the cube, to be left rendered whenever it's spawned. So what we're going to do is we're going to destroy the cube because we will no longer need it. It will be destroyed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bind an event off of the particle to when it finishes. So type in bind event to on system finished. Okay. And you're going to see this node here and it's going to have a, a red circle or a red square. You're going to go to add event, custom event. And then on here, you're just going to use the destroy actor node. And what this will do is clean up the memory on your computer whenever this glass is fully destroyed and we don't need it in the level anymore. And one more thing we can do is we can play a sound whenever we hit the glass. So it'll shatter and feel polished. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I'm using the applied damage system. So what I'm going to do is off the left mouse button, I'm going to do a line trace. And when that line trace hits the glass actor, it's going to apply damage. Okay, so we're going to do a simple line trace by channel. And we are going to get off the follow camera. We're going to get its world location. Now, we're going to plug that world location into the start. So the line trace starts at the world location. We're going to add the start and the end together so it's a coherent line. 
Okay, and we're going to get the forward vector of the camera. Now I have this on a camera boom, so it is going to look in the direction I want it to. Um, and we're going to multiply this by like 5,000. So because the get forward vector is one vector, we need to give it 5,000 vectors. So it shoots forward in a pretty long distance. Okay, now we're going to check to make sure it hits so we don't run anything if it doesn't hit. And we're going to use the applied damage node that comes with Unreal. Okay, we're going to drag off the break hit result. We're going to use an hit actor as the damage actor. Now, we're going to plug in the base damage of one. When we do that, we will be able to trigger the flash like this. If that's everything, if you understood everything, then you can go ahead and skip this, this part of the video. This is just the explanation for the people who are more beginners on what I did, okay? So I'm going to go over the specular here right now. What the specular does is it is a value of 0 to 1. And 1 means that it is very reflective and shiny, and 0 means it is not. So now we have roughness, which operates on the 0 to 1 scale as well. 0 means it is fully surf it is fully like glass, right? It's smooth, it's reflective. 1 means that it is fully rough. It is not going to be reflective, it's going to be like metal. And then we have the metallic, which is controlling whether the surface looks like metal. At a value of 0 0.2, it's going to add a slight reflection that we would want in glass. But if you go to like one, it's going to be really high metallic. If you go to zero, it's going to look not metallic at all. And now we have Fresnel. What this does is it creates a kind of like ring halo effect around the material to give it more depth, as I mentioned earlier. The Fresnel node comes with Unreal and has three parameters. You only really need to use the two parameters, the top two, and you can leave the third one blank. When using the Fresnel node and other material stuff, you kind of have to experiment with values to get a good look. And now with refraction, if we crank this up, remember earlier I set it to 1, which is recommended by Epic. If we crank this up to like 500 or 200, you can see artifacts in the material. And that's because it's distorting the image so much that it's creating artifacts like that. So leave it at 1, and that's a good value, typically. And now I'm going to go into explaining Niagara a little bit more at a basic level, on a fundamental level, so you can understand what it's doing. So the emitter update is like kind of like construction script for blueprints, right? It's called in the editor. It sets the default values for um, the particle system. Then we have particle, uh, particle spawn or emitter spawn. This is like begin play. And then we have emitter update, which is like tick. Everything on update runs every frame. So keep that in mind whenever you're adding modules. Unreal is pretty good about keeping sh making sure you stay on the correct module. The add velocity, it adds from a certain point using randomized values. So if you want to crank up the explosion amount, you can turn that up more. And if you want to see what a module looks like with and without, you can hit that little check mark next to it, and it will turn it off and on so you can see in real time how it changes it. And now the shape location is pretty important. Remember, we use box, and the reason we use box is because the shape of our mesh to create a smooth transition between breakable to solid needs to be the same shape. And the collision, the main value we need to change is the bounciness, which is also called restitution. Other than that, it works out of the box. And the mesh renderer handles the generic scale, the object, and the material you're using on the particle renderer. And now in the blueprint, we're using event any damage to trigger the explosion. You can do this on begin play, overlap events, wherever. I'm just using event damage, okay? Because I'm using the damage system with the line trace. Now, the spawn system is pretty self-explanatory. It spawns it at a location that you specify with the input parameters, okay, like location, rotation, and scale, which we're getting from the component. And the reason we're getting it from the component is we want the transition to be smooth. And once the particles are spawned, we don't need the cube anymore. So we could hide it, but that would leave collision and the memory. So we're just going to destroy it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to destroy the actor itself on the finish of the particles because it won't be needed anymore. 